Okay, today I'm going to address a number of topics that I think are extremely important going into the year 2015 and dispel some of the rumors that may be out there regarding Bible prophecy. First up, again, is ISIS. Certainly I hear a lot of different rumors and a lot of different uh, news articles uh, that are being spread, but you know what? ISIS has basically gained their ruthless terrorist identity through uh, the beheading of different foreigners and, of course, uh, United, United States citizens. But the truth of the matter is, is they're not moving on Syria. They're not moving on Iraq. They're not moving on uh, Jordan. They're certainly not moving on Israel. And certainly there will be a number of people who will disagree with me on that respect. But the truth of the matter is, is that you wait and see what happens throughout 2015. You're going to see that this bombing campaign by the United States and the coalition is going to be effective with the help of ground troops from various different uh, Middle Eastern uh, armies. In fact, there are reports right now that many of the coalition armies are taking back cities that were lost uh, to ISIS. But don't expect ISIS to be uh, ripped from the pages of news because that basically is what ISIS is very good at, and that is the uh, handling of the media. They will continue to try to be relevant in 2015. But as many reputable news sources, intelligence uh, centers have indicated that they don't expect ISIS to be near the threat that they were in the, in the past. Now moving on to Russia. As gas prices continue to fall and uh, stabilize at some point in time, I really don't know. Some have indicated that gas could get down to $20 a barrel in Saudi Arabia. Certainly is helping that to be the case and is putting a squeeze on both Russia and the U.S. Uh, shale industry. Uh, but don't uh, expect Russia to back off too soon. I think they are going to make a deal with Ukraine, of course, through the rebels. But don't expect them to, meet, to admit defeat uh, uh, to the West or to anyone else. It's going to be interesting to see how this affects them uh, in 2015. Many have indicated that they believe that this could possibly backfire upon the West and that it could be the cause of World War III and how it begins. And frankly, I, I'm, I'm not going to discount that in any way because of the fact that, hey, if the rapture of the church takes place, this world will go from natural to supernatural in a matter of seconds. And the Bible is clear that during uh, the tribulation period that there would be a battle that would take place, would engulf the whole world, and that one quarter of the world's population would be destroyed. Now, whether that will be started by Russia is unknown, or how that will begin, it does not indicate how that will take place. It just says that peace will be taken from the world. But frankly, I do not believe it will be started by an, a Middle East conflict. Frankly, there are no Middle East countries in the world who have the power to destroy one quarter of the world's population in such a very short amount of time. So it's going to have to be a nuclear-powered co uh, confrontation, I believe, that's going to bring this about. Now, certainly, there will be Middle Eastern countries, I believe, that will be involved, and you can bet... Uh, Israel, when this does break down, that Israel will unleash their nuclear arsenal upon their enemies, which will be their neighbors, and the second row of uh, uh, Islamic uh, nations as well. In fact, many nations will cease to exist, and some will cease to be a state. Now, of course, many believe also that when uh, the rapture takes place, that the, in time, that the United States will be, would become a third world country. Well, certainly, I don't see how that's possible, because... Even if our economy did go downhill, the technology that we have still exists. That our nuclear weapons and our nuclear technology would still be there, as it is in Russia, who is right now in a severe recession. So I don't expect that to be the case. And, you know, and some have said that it could be as soon as next year. Well, I don't expect that to happen at all, especially with gas prices the way they are. This, that, this uh, occurrence can only help the United States. And gas prices are expected to be down uh, way below the levels that they were previous to the drop pretty much all the way through to 2015. So don't expect the U.S. economy to explode during this time frame anyway. And, you know, I'd address this further, but I don't have the time. Uh, it's simply, that's just not the way economics works. One, Russia, will put them as an example. Their economy has kind of exploded, but they were already in bad shape to begin with. And it certainly doesn't help that Russia's economy and their government depends heavily upon the price of oil. That's simply not the way it is in the United States. We have a number of different economic sectors that keep this economy afloat. So there really, really isn't one sector that uh, we have to rely upon. So I suspect that uh, 2015 will be a fairly good economic year for the United States. 
But again, we'll just have to wait and see what happens on that. But I think that's my prediction anyway. Now on to where Bible prophecy really should be focused upon. That is in Israel and in the Middle East. In a Jerusalem Post uh, article, its uh, headline is, Europe is in favor of recognizing the Palestinian state, Abbas claims. And in the subheading it says, The world is on our side, says PA President. Only nine countries opposed Palestinian statehood bid at the UN General Assembly in 2012, notes Abbas. In another article by the Times of Israel, it says, An unstoppable avalanche toward a Palestinian state. And the article says, in, a January 2000, or in January 2015, more European parliaments will vote on the recognition of a Palestinian state. Finland, Italy, uh, Belgium, uh, Slovenia uh, have already scheduled votes. Other states are sure to follow. And it says 13 uh, European states, Sweden, Cyprus, Malta, and 10 Central and Eastern European states already formally recognize Palestine and countless countries in the rest of the world. In addition, the Palestinians are planning in the next days uh, to take their state, uh, statehood bid to the UN uh, Security Council, where it will likely be vetoed by the United States. Now, I suspect that this will be vetoed by the United States, but you know, you never really know right now that uh, the final offer, uh, or should I say the final draft of the resolution has not uh, been uh, made privy to the public nor to uh, any other officials. So early on next week, we should find out exactly what uh, they're looking for. But there's no question they're getting closer and closer to being declared a state. Now, certainly if that ever does take place, that they are declared a state. Israel has said that that simply doesn't change anything on the ground, but it really, in, in all actuality, it does. If, in fact, the United States does not veto this resolution, uh, then they know that they have uh, virtually everyone in the, in the world against them. And could this be what the Bible talks about in Daniel 9, 27, when it says that when the Antichrist rises up and makes a peace accord, that he will confirm a covenant? Is it possible that the Antichrist will confirm this UN resolution of a Palestinian state? I mean, the fact of the matter is, is even if the United States doesn't veto it and the resolution does go through, it can't be confirmed and made good unless at some point Israel gets out of the West Bank and turns this land over to uh, the Palestinians. So this is just one more possibility that you need to think about uh, as we head into the final stages of the last days. And remember, this covenant will be a covenant with many. So is this covenant with many going to be with uh, Israel, the Palestinians, and the entire United Nations? Or is it going to be with Israel, the Palestinians, and the Moderate Arab League? So these are just some of the options that I feel that need to be brought out and uh, pondered upon as we enter into 2015. And you know, if you don't know the Lord as Savior, uh, you know, if you died today, where would you spend an eternity? The Bible says that if you don't know Jesus as Savior, you will end up in a burning hell. Forget about the fact that the rapture is around the corner and that you might have to go through the tribulation period. The bottom line is, is you may not live another day. 150,000 people die every single day. It could be you. You know, most of those 150,000 will uh, have made the mistake of leaving this world without Jesus. You need to make that decision today. You know, Jesus died on the cross for your sins. You, if you go to hell, it's with your, with your sins paid for. So the Bible, the Bible does say that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So call upon the Lord and, and accept him as Savior today. You know, you Christians, uh, if you really believe that we're living in the last days, and you have lost friends, loved ones, and uh, just people that you run in from day to day, you need to get them get a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide in their hands. It'll be the best investment you ever made spiritually. Because the first thing this book does, forget about the fact that it uh, talks about how to survive the Tribulation Period, the first thing it tells you to do is th that you need to get saved. And you know, the one thing that, uh, the reason I got saved was that Bible prophecy interested me, and I certainly didn't want to go through the Tribulation Period. And I, I knew the only way that I was going to avoid that is if I knew Jesus as Savior. So prophecy interested me. You know, there's a lot of people out there that have an interest in Bible prophecy. And this book very well may, the, may be the catalyst that brings them to Christ. So I would encourage you to get this book and put it in their hands. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.